Welcome back to Through the Ringer. I'm your host, Tate Frazier. We got a fun show today. We got Nora Princiata joining us later. But first and foremost, we got the great cousin Sal in the building. Not actually in the building. We're remote today. But Sal, great to see you, man. How are you? I'm in a building. I'm not outdoors <laughs> in a parking lot here. But it's great to see you too, Tate. What a crazy, crazy time of year it is for sports. It is uh, the best of times and sometimes the worst of times. And unfortunately, times. we're going to talk about the uh, worst of times when it comes to your heart right now. And uh, we'll start with the first Tate here and I say to you Sal I know it was a tough week and you, you had some highs uh, you know Saturday was good with Oregon Monday was mm-hmm. good with the Mets Sunday mm-hmm. not so good so the first Tate I'll start here with you Sal after suffering the worst home loss since 1989 the year that Jerry took over as the owner Jerry Jones should take a page out of Star Wars Sal and blow up the Death Star in Dallas and uh, reset the the home field advantage there mm. because it is not looking good they have not been able to win at home they're still winless at home this year so I say to you it's time to get rid of the death star let's get a new building in there let's get a new place to play because right now jerry's boys they're not getting the job done how do you feel about that well uh i am not a hopeless star wars nerd like you are but i do (laughs) remember a scene where the trash compactor room is like falling you know like squeezing in on them and i feel like that's what's happening to mike mccarthy except it's not strong enough to crush his uh big fat bones so he gets Mm. to he gets to survive and live another day. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here today. Jerry is 82 years old. He's arguing with local Dallas DJs, calling them yahoos, which I've never heard before. So the bye week is off to a great start. And then, uh, oh, yeah, and then we got less for Amari Cooper. <laughs> we found out yesterday than they got two and a half years ago for Amari Cooper. So Jerry the Hutt, uh, yes, you're right. He may just have to start things over. Yeah, and maybe uh, he keeps those radio guys in the building when he does blow up the Death Star. I think this could be a good move. You know what I mean? It's a two-for-one proposition, uh, and he gets a no, new home field advantage. I, I don't know how you fix this. I don't know how you fix the bad juju in the building, but uh, Jerry Jones. He hates the DJs. He's yeah. not. Th- those guys are not going to be coaching for the Cowboys anytime soon. He'll fire DJs before he fires anyone on his uh, $200 million payroll. He also doesn't like when people assume that they're geniuses. He is not like that either so uh, we will not do that on the show we are not geniuses we okay, are no, uh, <laughs> nor is a genius if you want to wait a half hour you could uh, you, listen to yeah him. you're gonna get yeah. to the genius part of this uh <laughs> my next first day for you uh the jacksonville jaguars who are also struggling i say to you sal uh it's not dallas who's the biggest disaster i say that the jacksonville jaguars are the biggest disaster on multiple continents right Ooh. now and they are just playing some terrible football uh some people are saying that the urban meyer era was actually better than what we're seeing right now at the end of Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson said to the world, Sal, that he wants a culture change. Nobody even knows what that means uh, when you are actually the one setting the culture, how you're going to implement a culture change. But this is a disaster of epic proportions. What are your thoughts on the Jaguars? Well, we are in a position in a time where people in charge could say things that make no sense and uh, we just can move on. So good for you, Doug Peterson, for figuring <laughs> out that formula. But yeah, in, in competence and incontinence and co- whatever you want to call it, I don't know. The Jaguars are going through it. I don't think not since Hasselhoff started singing in Germany mm. has there been such a, a, a bigger international failure. But what we have Sunday, Tate, I'm actually excited to wake up early for this on the West Coast. You have New England and Jacksonville. They could take the torch from the Jaguars, the Patriots, that is. As great as Drake May has been, as excited everybody is, they could be the worst thing on two continents. So uh, we'll see if Coach Middleseat will uh, relinquish the honor. Do you think Coach Middleseat was able to keep his job because he didn't have to get into a plane and have to fly back? Do you think that saved his job? Because maybe, you know, because they're over there in London, you know, it's like you, you would have yeah. to pay for a separate flight, things like this, that they're just like, we'll let him coach one more game. I did mention be that. Yeah. yeah, I did. But Simmons and I discussed that because then you not only that, you have to fly someone out probably from the States, um, you know, in business class. And, you know, who knows if somebody... I don't know. For, as far as uh, incidentals and everything else, after you're paying, that could be fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars. They don't want that. That's too much money. Uh, nobody yeah. wants to deal with that. But like you said, <laughs> Sunday we have the toilet bowl between uh, the Patriots and the Jaguars, Lots and whoever loses that one will be the biggest disaster on multiple continents. So we'll talk about that. Uh, last one, last first tape for you. Vince Carter inducted into the Hall of Fame. North Carolina, the most players in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Sal, nice little stat there for you. So I say to you that North Carolina should retire number 15, Vince Carter's jersey there with the North Carolina Tar Heels. Obviously, you know, can't wear 23 with North Carolina. The last time we saw someone wearing 15, it was Garrison Brooks. Not good enough to be wearing Vince Carter's jersey. So uh, I think it's time. We put him up in the rafters. We retire the number, and you can't wear 15. You can't wear 23. That's the new standing, the new standard there for, uh, for all the North Carolina fans. How do you feel about that, Sal? 
All right. Well, listen, mo- mo- much like the Star Wars hypothetical, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to leave this up to you if you okay. say so. I'm more of a, a <laughs> women's college basketball th- right. guy. I like I think the product is better and everything, but we don't have to get into that. But this Vince Carter, dude, just on the dunks themselves, he should get in. Right. He should get mm-hmm. his jersey retired. And by the way, if you're waiting in the state of North Carolina to retire a jersey, it's going to have to be basketball. You're going to have to go back 25, 30 years, whatever it is, because it ain't going to be football in the college or pro ranks. Yeah, LT's our only guy, but I don't even think they can do that anymore. We we barely can claim LT. We're like the right. you know, like every once in a while we'll throw up a graphic to be like, yeah, he played here, and then you know people <laughs> will try to make you forget. Uh, now let's play something that is my favorite game. Uh, it is over under reactions. I love throwing out these hypothetical situations and these grandiose statements. And Sal, you tell me if it's an over or an under okay. reaction. So much so that I, I see this kind of drumming up. I've seen some other people playing this game, but uh, cease and desist. We'll come after you real wow. quick. Uh, you All know, right. real real quick, Sal. Uh, let's start Be careful. With- we have the best lawyers. <laughs> Spotify, you know, right. the greatest lawyers. So uh, don't think just as it's core week, we're going to bail out on this. And we'll fly you in business class, you know, real <laughs> quick, real quick. Uh, let's start with the first one. So I say to you, the Jets should just go ahead and make Aaron Rodgers the GM of the team. Is that an over or under reaction? He's making a lot of decisions behind the scenes. Uh, I think it's an underreaction. GM is game manager, right? That's yes. what it is. That's a, that's what it is. he's the game manager of the team. Yes. Yeah, he's making all the deals, and like even when he loses out, he's like, all right, I'll trade you my love for Nate Hackett. He could sit the sidelines, but you got to get me the underachieving injury faker Devonte Adams, and they're like, done. We're gonna do this for you. So. Um, I think this is just another Hail Mary attempt by Aaron Rodgers. Sometimes it works out for him. Sometimes it doesn't. But I do think it's hilarious that they have as many points through week six this year as they did last year. And they're over under Tate on Fandel. Seven and a half wins. Seven and a half. They were nine and a half. Wow, trending in the wrong direction, and uh, Nat Hackett is the ultimate fall guy, so uh, he thought it was all safe after yeah. Salah got fired, and then uh, Aaron Rodgers said, we're not done here yet, so uh, it did, the offense did look a little bit better, but a lot of miscues in the red zone, so a lot to figure out with the Jets right now. Uh, let's talk about a guy that everybody has, uh, you know, kind of, they thought they figured out, but they haven't figured him out the past three weeks. I say to you, Sal, Caleb Williams proved he's the best rookie quarterback in London on Sunday. Is that an no. over underreaction? <laughs> oh, come on. No, I'm, I'm still... That's an Four touchdowns. I know. I'm a Jaden Daniels guy, but mm-hmm. Caleb's done a nice job closing the gap. On Fandle, you can see he's plus 155 now to win that Offensive Rookie of the Year award when Jaden is minus 190. I'm just not that impressed with who they've beaten. Titans, Rams, Panthers, Jags. That's four and 16, Tate. So play some division games first. I know they go to San Francisco. They have a tough schedule ahead. Um, and the big game is against Jaden Daniels, I think, coming up at, right after the Bears' bye this week. Yeah, I think winner gets the award. That's a, that's how we settle that's this all. debate. That's that'll, fine. That'll yeah, be good. You, eight, that'll be great. Yeah, you said you're a Jaden Daniels guy. I'm a Drake May guy, and I say to you, Sal, oh. Drake May has an aura that makes him, quote-unquote, a natural leader. Even Bill Belichick has given my guy some credit uh, over or under reaction. How do you feel about Drake May? Mm. Well, I don't. I have to figure out what this aura thing is before I decide on over or under. I mean, maybe is there something radiating? Maybe there's a cream mm. they're using. Are they cheating again? They're using maybe. illegal creams on the players Whatever that it takes. create auras. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, he was fine. Our good pal nephew Kyle. I asked him, "What do you give him? Rate yeah, A to F, A plus." He gave him. Wow. So I don't know. He might have still been a little, you know, it was, it was Sunday night, so who knows? I don't know. I don't give him an A+. Plus. I mean, I, look, if, if you can give him an A+, plus and they lose by 20, God bless you. It's just a new brand of Patriot fans out there. Yeah, the, the delusion's a little bit grander at this point, but I'm going to go with an A-, minus. but it was still good. The, the interception early, I was very worried, so I, I actually yeah. had to change the channel because I thought that I was cursing Drake May in real time, but he got it together. Really? The, the touchdown pass to Booty was great, so Drake May trending in I'm the right I'm impressed direction. that your TV has the capability of changing channels that's good thank you really i really had no idea yeah it's good it works out stepped it up (laughs) finally i finally got there uh let's talk about aiden hutchinson unfortunately that was the sad uh story there in dallas outside of the actual dallas cowboys but with aiden hutchinson out for the season so i say to you tj watt is a lock for defensive player of the year over or under reaction Mm, I don't think you could say lock with these guys. I'll, I'll go slight overreaction. He's the favorite, right? You said that. I think he's plus 140. You could, mm-hmm. But you could really just never say lock with these guys that are injured. You know, they, they, they're they double teamed, so if they fall the wrong way, that's it for them for the season. Not exactly what happened to Hutchinson, but something similar breaks that foot. He is in good shape odds-wise, Watt, with Hutchinson out. Garrett battling multiple foot injuries. Micah Parsons been out. Uh, Max Crosby 
dropped a little bit. He's like fighting people on the sidelines. I would say uh, take a shot at Will Anderson, plus mm-hmm. 800, five and a half sacks. I think he had three last week. So he's really stepping it up. Might be ready to explode. I like that. Outside the box, uh, let's talk about a ballot box. Maybe a first ballot mm. Hall of Famer, Derrick Henry. Sal, I say to you, is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Obviously, running backs, few and far between there in the Hall of Fame. Over or under reaction? How do you feel about Henry? Yeah, underreaction for sure, right? I mean, there's not much. They may have to cancel the running back wing altogether after Henry gets in. He has over 10,000 yards rushing. He's going to end up probably, what is it? Like, he's going to pass OJ and Riggins this year. Not the Riggins from Friday Night Lights, the actual, like, John Riggins. Yeah, the real one, right. Yeah, he should up, end up top 10 rushing yards before he retires. He's already up there with Jim Brown, top five in touchdowns. So he and McCaffrey may be the last running backs after Peterson uh, gets in to be enshrined in uh, in can Maybe Rico Dowdle. I don't know. I'll have my hopes up a little high. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We'll see what happens. Maybe Tony Pollard there with the Titans. That's we'll right. see what happens. <laughs> Let's talk about the NFC North, Sal. I say to you, all four NFC North teams will make the playoffs over or under reaction. A lot of people say they're the best division in football. No, I tell. I, I listen. I, I'm. I'm. I, it is the best division in football, but I think the Bears eventually go away. I don't mean to crap on the Bears the whole segment, but their over under hasn't changed. Wins from eight and a half, which it was before the season. So even though they're four and two, even Fandles like, all right, this is a little bit silly. Uh, it's going to all even up. Also, and very important, I should have led with this, Harry, our friend Harry, is yeah. all over the Bears this year. So <laughs> that makes them a gigantic stay away. And he's also a gigantic stay away. So. Yeah, I thought it was an underreaction until you just told me that. So I'm going to flip back on your side. That is a okay, major good. overreaction. The Bears will not be making the playoffs. If I could convince one person in the country... <laughs> Hate that the Bears are an overreaction, then I can do it. You got That's me. Uh, Cam Rising. I don't know if you saw this. How Cam Rising will be back for his eighth year of college football. <laughs> Those are the reports. So I say to you, there should be a limit, an age limit on college athletes. Is that an over or under reaction? How do you feel about the Van Wilders of college sports? <laughs> I'm going to say overreaction here, Tate. I don't, first of all, I don't know how he's able to do this. Like, is it, I get the COVID exemption year. Is it, is it still the COVID exemption year? You yeah, it just to, keeps going. Just rolls you over. Just, you wear a mask and you're fine. You can yeah. keep playing. And he also starts three games a year. So I, I, I want to see him, you know, taking snaps well into his 50s for Utah. Maybe he has like seven wives back by then. But yeah, let, keep it going. I want to see how far this can go. Yeah, and I think you should be able to play for your college for as long as you want. Maybe your whole life. Like Tim Tebow could just still be at Florida being the quarterback. You know what I mean? Why right. Not? That'd be fun. Just save just Pro some sports. eligibility quirk in the, in the guidelines and then you're in. And then you're in. Uh, next one, storming the field is a quote-unquote young man's game. We just saw your son, Archie, yeah. storming the field after the Oregon's big win against Ohio. Iowa State is that an over or under reaction how do you feel about storming the field well it's bad because he had failed out last week so I'm like what are you doing why this is this more even more embarrassing no my thing has always been take double digit dog against the top five team and then go open the floodgates you could do it but I was so jealous when I saw a video and I think we have it here of Archie rushing the field jealous mostly because he was able to scale a two and a half foot wall which I would not be able to do uh, even <laughs> in my 20s so I don't know how the kids do it did you ever do it for UNC basketball or were they just too good there was never a reason to do I, it. I did it when I was in high school uh, funny enough oh. uh, they, they won the ACC regular season against Duke this is in 2010 or 2011 uh, 2010 2011 season and uh, got to storm the court that was a lot of fun but uh, mm. football we don't have many times that we can storm the field and uh, last year no. I was at the Carolina Duke football game when people stormed the field I did not storm the field but, oh that's right that's yeah. right I remember you sending you, ne- you I, knew you I, had I filmed to send the others it. yeah right, I, I exactly. filmed the others storming it but it, it was a young man's game as we just said it was not for even me, filming the others storming it is a young man's game I don't even know if I could keep, keep up with that yeah I did my best I did my best shout out to Archie though I'm happy for him happy for the Ducks yeah. last one Sal the guy playing Gronkowski in the in Aaron Hernandez uh, American sports story if you haven't watched Watch this show. Go check it out. It is insane. He deserves an Emmy for his performance, Sal. Is that an over or under reaction? Are you watching the show? Listen, I, I haven't watched yet, but I've watched yeah. all the clips, uh, all, all the important clips, I think. Now, now there are like 20, 25 out of them uh, right now. So after I get through the, the reiterations of this Menendez thing between documentary and cartoon <laughs> and everything else, I'm going to focus on this. But yes, I think it's an underreaction. I think they should rename the Emmys. They should call it the American Sports Story Awards because everything I see is great. It's much funnier than the bear, that's for sure. Absolutely. It's, it's the best comedy that we've seen in a long time. Uh, yeah. You know, Riv- 
riveting performances. Uh, Peter Travers is writing reviews. A lot of people are giving their thoughts on what they've seen so far in this show. And uh, I've never seen people throw the football or run uh, like this on camera and actually try to be serious about it. So uh, you get Bill Belichick listening to Bon Jovi in his office. I mean, there's a lot of uh, ridiculous moments that are happening in this TV show. And you know, that, there, there's, I'm yeah. sorry, but there's the officiating in scripted television should not be as bad as it is in real life, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, Aaron Hernandez caught a touchdown where his two feet were like closer to the stands than they were to the field, <laughs> and they called it a touchdown. And uh, so, yeah, the officiating needs work, even in uh, scripted TV. They said we only got one take, Sal. Uh, you, you, these production <laughs> right. budgets are tough. Okay. we got to make things Try happen. Try to get your feet somewhere near the field. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if we can figure it out. Let's call up the captain, the Riverboat captain. Let's do some prop culture here. we got a fun question this week. Uh, speaking of the Aaron Hernandez show, the captain is asking, Sal, who should play our boss, Bill Simmons, uh, in Aaron oh. Hernandez, American Sports Story? I'm sure he's going to be in this. He has to be in this. And we got the odds right now to see who's going to actually play him. Matt Damon is the favorite at 2-1. to one. Colin Farrell at 5-1. to one. Obviously doing a great job on The Penguin right now. One of my favorite shows. Uh, Michael B. Jordan at 20-1. to one. We got the field at even odds. What say you, Sal? Who should be playing BS? Well, Michael B. Jordan has uh, so many similarities with Simmons. He's got the mannerisms or the look. Just I think the, that's the his profile. pick. Yeah. It's really good. But, you know, um, interesting. I, You know what? I'm going to go with Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, and no. I, there is Yes, there is a resemblance, Tate. And we People have sent it out there. And, you know, it's I don't know if you eyes. remember. We, the Ringer did a whole thing in Las Vegas, and there was a poster up there all through Caesar's Palace, like, come see Bill's... I, I swear, I think people thought they were going to see Ellen do stand-up because the resemblance was crazy, crazy uncanny. And, you know, so I would love for Ellen to step in there. I could help her with the imitation. Um, I've always wanted to be a voice coach for Ellen, so this could really work out. Nice. I think it would be great. She needs a gig. Uh, that We're in a gig economy, Sal. I think this works out. Uh, I'm going to keep my job, so I'm going to go Matt Damon here. I'm going to go 2-1. <laughs> to one. I'm, I'm going to go with the favorite. I'm going to go with Matt Damon. I think he would be great. He could play B. Yes, they got the Boston background. You know, it all checks out. But I do think we need some more, like, sports personalities in the mm. show, right? I mean, you know, a BS, you know, maybe a Mike Greenberg, whoever it is. We need some people in the show. I like show. it. Yeah, some of the media. Yeah. How do you like them apples? Yeah, I think that works. Yeah. I think that could be good. Yeah, I, I think, think you that checks right out. One. Yeah, that'd be yeah. perfect. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we come back with Cousin Sal. Stay tuned. We're going to do some line look-aheads and some track to the future. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Through the Ringer. We're here with Cousin Sal, and we're having a lot of fun. It's week seven in the NFL. We're moving along this season, and we got Thursday night football coming up. Sal, are you fired up? How do you feel about Thursday night football, just at large? You know what I mean? Just from your, are you excited when you hear like a Thursday night football matchup? Like, <laughs> where do you stand on this? I think the, the way you're giggling through the question, I think you know my response okay. here. No, it's good when it's good, but uh, Broncos, Saints, I don't know, but this is. Uh... I don't know. Just the Broncos have some suspect wins. The Saints who beat two terrible teams in the Panthers and Cowboys. How do we know? How do we know who's going to prevail tape? But God, you can go through it. We we don't know, but it is the Sean Payton game. So I like to yeah, add a little bit of a narrative true. behind this, right? Sean okay. Payton going back to New Orleans. Maybe the fans, we'll see if they're nice to him, if they're mean to him. We'll see if he has something that is up his sleeve against his New Orleans faithful, but we'll see what happens here. So again, Broncos, Saints, Thursday night, Saints plus two and a half in this one. The total 36 and a half, uh, just based on those lines you like either one of those Sal? well i will not be betting thursday night games involving nfc south teams i will not be but say with me Tate. Yeah. i will not be betting. i mean i, I just write it on the chalkboard it, yeah it was terrible a couple weeks ago tampa and atlanta and i really did make that deal with myself and it's sad that you have to pay uh, for a streaming service to view this uh, bo nix and spencer rattler debacle but <laughs> 36 and a half is all you need to know for the over under and I, I without digging in too hard already I, I think that's a little high right now so and it's also probably how many passing yards Bo Nix will have at halftime yeah I just hope half. we see a touchdown in this game um, yeah. but you like the under I think I like the under as well and uh, Al yeah. is going to be bored to tears and he's going to take it out on everyone <laughs> he shouldn't yeah Kirk Herbstreet is going to be the closest one he's going <laughs> to take shots from Al the entire time the Al's ties though have been great so shout out to Al oh yeah um, you like some player props in this one that's probably the best way to watch this game from a prop standpoint what do you like Sal 
Yeah, well, I'm stupid because I said, oh, it's going to be under, 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 and I made fun of Bo Nix just about 30 seconds ago, and I'm going to take a Bo Nix over prop over 18 and a half completions. He's exci- exceeded this. He's also excited about it. He's exceeded <laughs> this in five of his first six games, uh, and he's done so in mysterious fashion, Tate. Like, he'll often end up with negative yards passing at half or 20 yards passing, but within those 20 yards, it comes on like eight completions. And then he comes alive in the fourth quarter. And so long as they're not way ahead, which I don't think they will, I think he hits over this number. Devon Vell, Cortland Sutton, Javante Williams all had a uh, half a dozen targets last week. So he's comfortable with this offense. I think it gets him to almost 20, about 20 or 21 completions. Yeah, I like that. And also Bo Nix is a maniac confirmed. I mean, we saw That's what it. you said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's down 20 to zero against the Chargers and he's taunting the defense uh, as he's right. running out of bounds. So I think that made me like the over uh, with his completions. I like the Saints to score first in this game and to lose the game. You can get that number oh. in FanDuel at plus 370. I think the Saints come down, score a field goal, maybe even a touchdown get all excited and uh, at the end of the day i think that for whatever reason the broncos and sean payton figure out how to win this game so i like that score first i like that lose the game plus 370 that'll be a fun one on thursday night football but like you said uh maybe don't bet the nfc south on thursday night but uh you know maybe you can throw a prop bet out there we'll see what happens <laughs> i know i'm gonna bet it you know you, kidding? you are Stupid. you are it's okay uh let's track to the future and this is a fun one the commanders to make the playoffs yes right now is minus 194 no plus 154 or what are your thoughts on the commanders, how the outlook of the season looks, and do you expect them to be in the playoffs, Sal? I expected them to be in the playoffs in August. This was my big upset yep. along with the Raiders, but whatever. So I, I think I got it at plus 340 or plus 350. Now you're saying it's minus 194. I can't I can't turn my back on them now. I was impressed the way they handled the Ravens. I know they lost by seven, which was ended up being the spread, but they could have easily gotten blown out there, and they showed me a lot in that loss and they're going to be favored against the Panthers the Bears and the Titans all at home they have some NFC South battles aside from uh aside from the Panthers there I think they could split their division games I think they're a 10 win team Tate put me down for yes actually don't put me down I'm already down you're already down and you were down at a way better number so I mean at 194 probably not the best odds to take it but if you're smart like Sal you already took it and you're going to be celebrating you want to buy some of it from me you could you can you know (laughs) maybe let's talk off here we'll figure it out we'll we'll, we'll get something going uh there are also some FanDuel weekly specials that if you go to the site, you can go check out these. This is a fun one, Sal, that you are, are a fan of just because he just was the big Hail Mary trade that we just saw with Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Devontae Adams, what do you like for the FanDuel weekly special? I think they have him to record 30-plus receiving yards in each half. They do this with the running backs. So they can get that with Derrick Henry. You have to pay a different price. Uh but you get plus 360, and it works out nicely because Aaron Rodgers brought in a hamstring specialist from Sri Lanka. So this is going to be real. Everything is coming up roses now. I'm just kidding. No, no pun intended. I might pass on this prop. Um, not against the Steelers' eighth-ranked defense. This, this might be tough to get 30 in each half. But uh, check out those FanDuel specials. There's something there for you, for sure. Yeah, there's always some fun ones out there. I do feel like Devontae Adams is going to catch a Hail Mary. Uh, this is Aaron Rodgers. Maybe the last thing that he has left in his arsenal mm-hmm. is a Hail Mary. And uh, even if Devontae Adams doesn't have a catch going into halftime, he can catch one D for 40 yards, and you can still hit this in the first half. And then the second half, I think he'll get more targets. So I like. So it. he can catch two passes, each a Hail Mary at <laughs> the yes. end of each each half right, right. and maybe and they win maybe the game. one at the end of overtime too wow yeah. this is really getting good you know I was, what i'm going for it plus 360 let's right. take the special there plus 360 Devonte adams i like that one um i was just looking at the schedule for the jets uh you got steelers at steelers you got at yeah. patriots uh you got the texans their next five games i feel like are all winnable games so how crazy will it be let's say they go four and one uh over their next five games how much is the narrative going to change with the jets and with aaron Rodgers? uh and how much are we going to have to eat you know some crow here on the show how like how quickly is that going to shift for us a lot uh, i'm going <laughs> to okay. answer all those questions in one yeah it, it's 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 going to be bad but i don't think they get there i just don't think they have the magic in there it's just not a a great formula they've been bounced around from coaches to players and everything else so um yeah put me down for uh for under for them you know they have three more primetime games and, and that's before anything's flexed so enough already yeah it's so much primetime Aaron Rodgers and uh you know he's talking about sarcastic ball uh which is a South Park reference for people that don't know after the game I mean talking about 
the officials and all the flags and things like that. So uh, a whole lot more to do with the New York Jets, I'm sure, for the rest of the season. But now let's talk about something that we are masters at, especially you, college football. We love the upset specials, and we love taking the money line. Uh, last week, or the first week, you got Syracuse plus 190 over UNLV. That yeah. was a big one. Then you had Arizona State on Friday over Utah. Cam yeah. Rising, we talked about before. So you're going for the third straight one here, Sal. Who do you like this week? Yeah, Tate, we could have, you know, we picked combined. We had four dogs in a row. We mm-hmm. could have made it six had you not gone stupid and taken Oklahoma. So I stupid. Mean, uh, uh, what, what happened? There? They got so. an interception on the first possession, though, Sal. And I, I started pre-celebrating. That was the problem. You never celebrate too early. That was, uh, that was my fault. I was like Bo Nix, too much moxie. That's right. Way too much moxie. <laughs> Nixie moxie. Uh, I'm going to go for three in a row with Michigan State over Iowa, plus 176. Their defense is pretty good. They've allowed 21 points a game despite playing Ohio State in Oregon where they got lit up. I think they get a little breather here with Iowa. So could be like a little bit of a rock fight. Not a Dwayne the Rock Johnson fight. <laughs> more, more, a pebble-like uh, fight there. 19-16, Sparty. Give me Michigan State as my underdog pick. What do you a want? rock fight is way more entertaining than Big Ten football. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I like Michigan State. Iowa put up 40 points last week. I feel like they have a little bit of a letdown, so I like that, right. plus 176. I'm going to take the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets against Notre Dame. Notre Dame going down to Atlanta. They're going to play in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, Georgia Tech, just for whatever reason, they play well in that stadium. I like their defense. I like the way that they're able to run the ball. I think Notre Dame is probably going to overlook Georgia Tech a little bit here. So you can get Georgia Tech at plus 340. Sal. So I'm going to take I'm the Yellow you. Jackets to beat Notre Dame in this one. That's beautiful. Just when people ease into Notre Dame, they're crushing all these teams. Oh, well, they're back. Wow, that Texas A&M game. That must have been weird. Oh, nope. This is this is kind of one that stops them in their tracks. Yeah, it feels right. And uh, I feel like Georgia Tech, that's what they're built to do. Uh, some mm-hmm. of these confounding upsets. That's what they do in the ACC. Uh, let's flip to the WNBA. Your specialty here. We got Game 3 series is tied 1-1 to right now. Uh, we got uh, three games to decide who's going to be the eventual WNBA champion. We got the Liberty taking on the Lynx. Lynx plus three and a half in this one. The total 160 and a half. Who do you like in game three, Sal? I have the Lynx tonight. Simmons and I with House and our friend uh, Kevin Hatch. We went big on the Lynx to win the uh, championship. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, I want I want your opinion. Do you think the <laughs> Liberty are going to hold Nafisa Collier and Kayla McBride to 10 of 21 shooting again? I don't. I Anyone don't. knows anything about basketball yeah. knows that. It's not going to happen again. So give me the Lynx plus the points here, and I think they win the game. Yeah, I like Minnesota as well. This is a good pick, Sal. I'm right on your side here. <laughs> um, let's flip to baseball. Uh, we got. I mean, line. honestly, do you think <laughs> – You've seen Nafisa Collier. Well, you you think they're going to be able to hold her down? Oh, come on. It's, God, it's God, high-flying God. good basketball. Go All check right. it out. WNBA Finals. Uh, let's flip over to the MLB playoffs. We got, uh, we're got we in championship series. Line oh, look ahead boy. here. We got the Dodgers taking on your Mets. Dodgers minus 156. Mets plus 132. In this game three, uh, we've seen the first two games, so we kind of know what to expect in this series so far. What do you like in this one, Sal? So those are the series odds, right? Mm-hmm. So the Mets, I yep. think, yeah, for game three, it's even. It's about minus 108 each side. I think that's a little uh, hefty price there for the Dodgers for the series. But I, I can't do it. My mind is too uh, – I'll, I'll pick a player prop. I'll do that for you. Take Pete Alonzo will record an RBI at plus 160. I'm already nervous here. Uh, five for 14 against Walker Bueller with four home runs. Pretty damn good. Three RBIs in the Milwaukee series, three in the Philly series. None so far, so I think he gets it going. Uh, time for the polar bear to swim or whatever polar bears do at City Field. <laughs> they swim. Let's do it. Yeah, they, they, do, swim, they, swim? they swim to All go right. get like a Coca-Cola at least. I've seen that All happen. All right, before. swim around the bases, Pete. <laughs> do that for us and let us collect the plus 160. I like it. Plus 160. There you go. Let's track to the future. NBA basketball is almost here, Sal. So get ah. ready for guess the line slash NBA conversations mm. that are ahead for you. Uh, the NBA holes in your life are coming out uh, in full force. we got the 2024-2025 season starting next Tuesday. Is there a track to the future that you like uh, when you're looking at the board, so? Yeah, it's funny. Like, the, you and I are the only ones not afraid to talk about the NBA. Like the, I feel like <laughs> right. the ringer staff has to get with it. Don't let this season <laughs> sneak up on you. Uh, I'm going to take Luka to lead an assist per game, plus 650. That's Luka Doncic, okay? Um, not sure why this number is so high. He was second to Halliburton last year. He averaged almost 10. Trey Young is back, so there's like a three-man mix now, but I don't know that he stays healthy. He's the one that's favored here. Could be dishing to Clay Thompson a lot, right? And a little mm-hmm. change there in the offseason. That'd be fun. 
plus 650, way too high for a guy who hovers around 10 every year. And it does feel like Luka MVP year. Um, it feels like we're, yeah. we've been knocking on that door for quite some time. And if he does what uh, you know he is capable of doing, I think he's going to be in that conversation all year long. And like mm-hmm. you said, when you have a shooter like Clay Thompson who's going to get easy shots and not have to play defense, it's going to be a win for Dallas. Uh, I got a fun one for you. The Memphis Grizzlies, they're back uh, this season. They got Zach Eady in the draft. He's going to be starting for them. And I got yeah. the Grizzlies to win the Southwest Division. You can get that number at plus 250, Sal. So, uh, I think there's already some sharps on this. The number's kind of trending like down. That. So I'm yeah. going to go with and Memphis. Where is Edie for uh, – I'm sorry, this is different from, from what you're talking about. Yeah, but he's plus 350 to win Rookie of the Year. So that's a nice uh, nice little addition. He's the favorite. Yeah, give me Zach Edie. Give me Memphis Grizzlies. And uh, I think John Moran's I'll Maransky. give them all to you. Yeah. Yeah, you take them all. <laughs> I, think, I think they're going to have a good year. So uh, shout <laughs> out to the Memphis Grizzlies. Last thing, Sal, before we let you go. I couldn't let you go without the Tate debate. And uh, there was a lot that happened – this weekend in the NFL, and uh, obviously Will Levis was a part of uh, some of the craziest parts of it, and one of the craziest parts was him going out of bounds like a maniac and <laughs> taking one of the ball boys out and actually tearing the guy's ACL. Uh, we've been talking about this guy in the media. They keep calling him a ball boy. What mm. you picture in your mind is like a 16-year-old over there with the footballs, but this is a grown man. Um, so I say to you, Sal, we need to change the name of these ball boys. They do not need to be called ball boys if they're going to be grown adults who have real jobs uh, who are doing this job. So uh, my big thing, my big Tate debate this week is that we have to change the name uh, NFL. I don't know what they want to go for. So I don't know if you have any ideas, but we can't go with ball boys anymore, especially when they're in the line of fire and they're tearing their ACLs and they're putting their lives on the line. So let's update the name so we can get some more respect on these guys games. I'm with you. I'm going to have to think on the name. This isn't going to be much of a debate because I'm with you 100%. I do know ball boy is a derogatory term, and I think they should take it out of all the textbooks. I don't Mm -hmm. want my kids running around saying ball boy. Um, I like my presidents (laughs) under 80 and my ball boys under 25 or whatever you want to call them. So get out and vote. Get out and vote. (laughs) Make things happen (laughs) for all the ball boys out there. Uh, Sal, you're the best. Where can we find all your work? And then we'll let you go enjoy the rest of your day. Against All Odds podcast on the Ringer Podcast Network. Cousin Sal's winning weekend. Have Anthony Richardson on this week and the Ringer pregame show on Sunday right here on FanDuel TV. It's going to be fun. Look at that. A-list guest. Uh, As always, Sal, you're the best. Appreciate you coming on the show. And we will be back on the other side of the break with Nora Princiati. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Through the Ringer. Joining us, and she's back again, it is the great Nora Princiati. Nora, great to see you. It's great to see you too, Tate. We have a lot to talk about, and uh, usually when we have these conversations, it starts with one man in the NFL. Of course, I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers, and we got more news. We've It's seven days since the Jets decided to fire Robert Sala <laughs> on the way back from London, uh, but it feels like a lifetime ago. We just got Monday Night Football. Uh, we saw that whole debacle. There were mistakes. There were missed opportunities. We got one more Hail Mary today with Devontae Adams going to the New York Jets, so let's just start there. When you saw the news of Devontae Adams, what was your first reaction when and that kind of just got broken out to the world. You know, my first reaction was just like what you said. It's been a busy and newsy week plus uh, in Jets land. But I think the big takeaway, and I went to that Monday night game against the Bills, and the big takeaway for me was that I did think that their offense uh, looked improved. And if they won that game on Monday night, they would be first in the AFC East right now. So we can't uh, lose sight of the fact that they are still in contention. The next five games that they have coming up, they're at the Patriots or at the Steelers, then at the Patriots. So there's two games that maybe they could win on the road, get some good momentum. And who knows? We're having a different conversation about the New York Jets. I want to talk about another team in the AFC East. Uh, they got a quarterback, Drake May. He made his debut. He had the the big touchdown pass. My North Carolina brethren uh, to Booty that got everybody fired up. Even Bill Belichick uh, was saying nice things about Drake May. Uh, just as far as the good vibes, the good energy, you saw Jacoby Brissett, uh, you know, celebrating the touchdown. How does it feel in New England right now with the idea that maybe they do have their quarterback of the future? Yeah, I think I think they're really excited. The, the New England, the whole New England ecosystem, like the fans and people in the team. And I don't, I'm not like crapping on them. This is not what I mean. But it's just funny to me because I covered that team for so many years. That right. whole place has gotten so used to moral victories so quickly. 
It's happening real fast in real time. Uh, one last thing I want to hit before we hit to the break here. Uh, I want to talk about Nick Sirianni just quickly. Uh, your reaction to some of his rash behavior. I mean, it is <laughs> they obviously won the game, so it's better when you win. But it, it seems a little um, out of character, I guess, is the best way to put it in a PC way. I mean, it's just dumb, right? Because it's not like, yeah, right. who That's cares? I don't like Eagles fans can absolutely they certainly dish it out. So they better be able to take it. Um, mm -hmm. so I don't really think like, I don't care if Nick Sirianni is chirping at fans. I don't really care if he's being weird about it in his press conferences. I suppose I care a little bit that at least optically it ended up looking after the fact, like he was using his kids as a human shield. Like that's, that's bad right. vibes. But for the most part, like, I don't think this has much impact on how good or bad the Eagles are going to be this year. It's just from his perspective. Like, what is the number one rule of being a kind of embattled on the hot seat coach? To me, it's don't make people think about you. Yeah, he's getting Kendall Roy comps, uh, which is never a good thing when it comes to coaching. <laughs> and uh, I think he's turned into a backseat driver. You said he's in the backseat, but he's yelling a lot from the backseat. And I think Eagles fans, they want him to stop yelling. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we got more NFL with Nora. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Through the Ringer. We're still here with Nora, and we're still sifting through all the mini storylines in the NFL. And we got a fun one. We got a QB controversy, or at least from, you know, probably the fans' standpoint in Indianapolis right now. Uh, week seven coming up. Shane Steichen, head coach, has said, and he has repeated many times that Anthony Richardson is the starting quarterback in Indianapolis. But if you watch the tape, Joe Flacco continues to get the job done. Nora, do we have a controversy, and should we be clamoring for Joe Flacco to still be the starting? starter there in Indy how do you feel about this no this is like so absurd to me you didn't spend a first round pick on Joe Flacco like I I get uh, Flacco fever is Seven one of the most downs. contagious diseases known to mankind I get it it can rip its way through a community Mm -hmm. they need to play their young quarterback. He needs to get some game reps. They need to figure out if they can keep him healthy, if he can stay on the field and see what Anthony Richardson has to offer that offense. This is, this is such a silly controversy to me. Do you think it's uh, something where like in the locker room, where if Anthony Richardson goes out there and he doesn't play great, where guys start looking around and they, they got the Flacco fever and they're saying, put Joe back into the game. I mean, can we have a situation like that on our hands? Or do you think it's an understood situation where they're like, look, this guy was the number four pick. Uh, we need him to play football. We all understand what we're doing here. And Joe Flacco knows that's the case as well. I mean, maybe even a team trades for Joe Flacco. Is he good trade bait for someone else out there that needs a quarterback? I mean, I think with a quarterback who's had, and obviously it's earlier, early in his career, but had the, the injury issues that Richardson has had so far, I wouldn't go around trading away your, your veteran backup. Um, to your point about the locker room, I definitely think that can be a thing. I just don't think that it is a thing right now. I think, you know, NFL players are not dumb. They understand the investments that their teams have made in, in, in different players. They understand that there's a need to, you know, think about the short term, but also think about the long term. And so I don't think that they would be in a situation right now where anyone in that locker room is going hey, wait a minute, you're sacrificing my chance to be successful, my chance to be on a winning team, my chance to perform well um, by putting Richardson back in. I think you can get to that point, right? Like we've, we've seen that happen. Um, I, I wonder, you know, look, the Browns keep insisting that they're going to continue to play Deshaun Watson. I do think at a, at a certain point, I'm curious if we start to hear from that locker room about that. There are, are lines where players get upset because they think that a coach is holding them back by making a decision about who the starting quarterback is. But I don't think, like, they need to let him go out there and fail enough to get the locker room to that point. I don't think it's something that you preemptively go, oh, well, but 
the players could get Matt. Like the players understand why you need to get reps to the quarterback you drafted fourth overall. They get that. Yeah. And I- yeah, they get that. And I will say, if Joe Flacco was in Cleveland, we'd probably hear more clamoring uh, for Joe Flacco, you know, to be the quarterback I, there. I so think so. It'd be a, yeah, it'd be a different situation. So that's what it comes down to, situationally. Uh, let's talk about the NFC North. Uh, quickly, just at the top, looking at the entire division, do you think this is the best division in football this year? Uh, do you have someone else in mind? How do you feel about the NFC North? No, I mean, I'm a, I'm a believer in point differential as a, a stat that's pretty meaningful, more meaningful just than your win-loss record. And is it three out of the four? Is it all of the NFC North teams are, are at the top of the entire league? Like, this it's wow. definitely been the best division uh through six games this year. I absolutely think that's mm-hmm. true. And I think especially with the way that we've seen Caleb Williams start coming on, uh doesn't feel like they're slowing down. I mean, I, I guess you can make a sort of argument with the Vikings that there's some potential for that to be a little bit of a house of cards, but I still think they're a good team. And if I had to guess there's more in the NFC North that's sort of like on the come up than I think ripe to come crashing down towards the end of the season. So yeah, I I think they're the best division in football. Yeah, let's talk about Sam Darnold and the Vikings. I mean, undefeated, like you mentioned. Uh, I feel like every single week we keep expecting like the house of cards to crumble. But if anything, it seems to get emboldened. It seems to get stronger. Uh, what 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 could knock this team uh, kind of off their course right now? Because it does seem like they have it all figured out. And Darnold looks like the guy. He looks like a franchise quarterback. And you know, obviously, he was supposed to be when he came to the league. Didn't look like that in New York. But not many people do. Not even Aaron Rodgers right now. Sometimes. So um, how much do we believe in the Vikings and Darnold? I believe that they're a good team. Um, I don't believe that they're a Super Bowl contender. I I think they've done a really good job of keeping Darnold in positive situations. And that's not to discount the fact that I think he's definitely made some strides. He seems a little bit more calm, cool, and collected than we've seen from Sam Darnold at some times in the past. And and I absolutely think that that's a credit to him, his improvement, his preparation. But I think in general, what we're looking at is an offense and a, an overall team that's done a really good job playing complimentary football, scheming things up around him offensively so that he's not in a situation where he's feeling a ton of pressure, where he's just sort of being eaten alive by any defenses. I will be curious to see what happens if they run into somebody who can really, really wreak havoc and create pressure um, on Darnold through a strong defensive opponent, because that's when we've seen him sort of crumble in the past. And I think so far we've seen more them succeeding by avoiding those situations than Darnold facing those situations and overcoming them. So we'll see, but there's only so many opponents of the caliber necessary to make that happen. And at most, they're going to face that a handful of times, right? So uh, it's not to say that I think it's all going to go poof. Yeah, and the guy who would probably give him the most pressure would be Aiden Hutchinson. And unfortunately, there is no Aiden Hutchinson for Detroit right now. That was obviously a somber scene in Dallas, despite all the hoopla around them absolutely dominating the Cowboys. He goes down. He's out for the the season. Uh, That's the expectation, at least. Do we think without Hutchinson in Detroit that the Packers are maybe the favorites in this division now, or do we still believe in Detroit? I have sort of always believed in the Packers as the best team in that division. I just think, Mm. I think especially given that that's still such a young team, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them really start to peak later on in the year. I like Detroit. I do think Hutchinson is a, is a big blow um, to that defense, which hasn't it doesn't seem like all of the improvements that they really tried to make in the secondary there over the offseason I don't think all of those have totally clicked um so you are pretty reliant on having somebody on the defensive line who can create a lot of pressure and I don't quite know where they're going to get that without him so I think they'll I think they'll take a, a certain step back but I also think that that offense is good enough to overcome that most of the time but I really believe in this Packers team um so when we talk about who's going to come out of you know what it sounds like you and i both think is the best division in football then i would stick with green bay 
Yeah, and I think that uh, that Brazil game, we're going to look back on that week one game at the end of the season and be like, how did that happen? You know what I mean? Would the Packers have 12 wins or 13 wins or whatever it is, and the, and Eagles, the Eagles have are fire. Losing his mind. Yeah, we're going to be like, how did that happen? Uh, I want to talk about the Chiefs, uh, the other undefeated team. We mentioned the Vikings before. Um, do you think they have enough to win the AFC this year? And I say that a little bit in jest because obviously they're going for a three-peat, so they know what they're doing. But right now, if you look at the AFC uh, odds right now, plus 220, Ravens plus 360, Bills plus 490, Texans plus 550. It does feel like the Chiefs still have this in their control right now. But how do you feel about where they stand at 5-0? and oh? Yeah, I think they're fine. I mean, do I think that that <laughs> right. offense is a total juggernaut and and in the best possible position they could be in? Absolutely not. Um, I would love to know. If I could give everyone in the NFL truth serum, one of my first questions would be, hey, I know it would have been a divisional trade, but Kansas City, did you try to see if the Raiders would have been open uh, for business with you on Devontae Adams? Now, maybe he was just set on going to the Jets. But and 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 Amari Cooper just went to the Bills too. Like that that's another one. I'm curious if they've been in on these moves because I think in particular without Rasheed Rice, and given what we're seeing from Kelsey, who's been up and down, who's had his moments, but who, you know, is on on the wrong side of 30 and is clearly losing a couple steps of athleticism. It would just feel great, wouldn't it, if there were another weapon in that offense and i'm i'm interested in how much or how little they've pursued the opportunities that have been there yeah i would like to hear andy reed's thoughts on that or like you said the unfiltered thoughts on who was out there who was available who they would actually go after and who would actually make a difference on that offense and they might not actually need somebody because they do have patrick mahomes one last thing uh we saw taylor swift we saw travis kelsey game one alcs your thoughts. I mean, is this a thumbs up, thumbs down? Is this a, I don't, I, you know, it doesn't matter one way or the other. Like, how do you feel about them being there at the ALCS game? You know what I loved that you could kind of tell. And I think I, I assume, I assume they sort of went not rooting for the Yankees, but you could tell a couple of times that she just had it in her where she really, really, really wanted to root for her adopted York, home yeah. city of New York. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, happens, maybe though. she said that. Maybe she said, look, Travis, like, I'm sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, welcome to New York, baby. But it's, it, it was given a house divided energy, right? Yeah. Like he was pulling for Cleveland probably, uh, you know, deep in his gut with his Ohio ties. Right, that's, and I, and I, I don't know that city. he, I don't know that that's true. I'm just assuming that he's rooting for Cleveland um because of where he's from but yeah it had a little bit of a house divided thing which i liked yeah i think it's good for everybody uh nora you're great for the show we love having you on where can we find all your work and then we'll let you go enjoy the rest of your day ringer.com ringer nfl show every single album wherever you get oh. your podcasts wherever you get your podcast go listen to nora she's the best we appreciate you coming on the show and we'll be right back after the break There you have it for another edition of Through the Ringer. Thanks to Cousin Sal, as always, and thanks to Noah for coming back on the show. We appreciate you tuning in, and we will see you next week.